Okay, an another thing that I really wanted to talk about, uh, I'll briefly uh, show it on the screen uh, for people. It's an article that you wrote, Technical Debt Architectures Ticking Time Bomb, and actually I've sent to many clients this article because it, everything <laughs> you wrote about that resonated so much with me. L let's say that we're taking the example of a Revit model and you have deliverables, you need to deliver a set of uh, a plan of uh, PDFs. So like to save some time to get the deliverables ready, you cut starting to cut some corners so maybe the, the quality of the model g goes out of the window a little bit and then it kind of turns into a bad cycle and you also talk about how employees go go into it and now it can it just creates uh, a dead spiral for a project so what inspired you to write this article in the first place i mean i've experienced it i think every <laughs> yeah. everyone uh has either experienced it or been in a organization where it's where it's happened and everyone knows the project that <laughs> they're, they're talking about. It starts with, you know, management saying, just get it done, right? Just, yeah, yeah. you know, get it out the door. We've got this deliverable. And so what happens is, you know, people tend to cut mm -hmm. corners and it gets them through that deadline. But then it becomes a bit like negative compound interest and you keep cutting more corners um, until, you know, the project's really broken and no one wants to work on it they hire new staff you know they jump on the project and then quickly realize oh my god what, what have i done <laughs> there becomes a point in time where you, you can't you can't go back right it, the, the damage is done that you you just got to kind of get through it so if you wanted to hold people accountable they've left the company if you want to fix it yourself there's been so much attrition you know you don't know why decisions were made you know, why they did it this way. Was it to cut corners or was that a better way of doing it? So no one knows. Um, and it just kind of like drifts along with this, you know, rudderless <laughs> ship. And it's it's really kind of problematic. And often it's blamed on, oh, we don't have enough digital skills or, you know, the BIM manager wasn't hands-on enough. But the whole premise of that article was actually, well, it's management's duty that it's okay to cut corners but you need to sort of keep a ledger of that and say, all right, you know, a bit like a budget. We, we've we overspent this week. We're going to have to make up for it next week. Um, so you mean like if you have a Revit model and you kind of cut corner for the, the sake of the, the deliverables, let's say it's a set of PDF, you just put it somewhere. Hey, we have to go back and kind of redo this part of the model. Yeah. So, so you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, Trello or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that where you're actually documenting the decision process and and what's outstanding and say look i did this we can get it out but i'm going to need three hours five hours whatever on monday to kind of fix it up because if we don't it's going to accumulate i also see it's on a little bit on all projects right if there's a little bit of of that in all projects some of our worse than others to me it's the moment that you don't trust the the model anymore right that you like uh, that ignore the model you have uh, go to the, the the page to see the real information that's where it's at and that's that's when you enter a really dangerous zone you know i think one example i got onto a project and i think there's you know there's obviously the textbook way and there's the quick and dirty way and sometimes you need to do quick and dirty mm -hmm. but as long as everyone is aware of the consequences of that so that they can be managed going forward um yeah I like the idea of of keeping a ledger of all these uh, these uh, cut corners. Also, one of the most dangerous sentences that I, I I hear in projects is we don't actually have to model this. I see sometimes people that might not have that much Revit experience or BIM experience. It's like, ah, just do it in. TD. Why would you need to model that? They would say it's not going to change anyway, right? That's decided. The client made his mind up. Just just do it in two D to save time, but. As you know, the client always uh, changes mind and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you end up reworking it anyway, right? 